Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A few days ago, I did an introductory video, an On One Portrait AI. And in that video, I mentioned that in a few days, I do another video where I'll explore some more features of the application. Now, if you haven't seen that video I did a few days ago, I'll have it linked in the description below this video. Also in that video, I mentioned that if anyone had any questions about On One Portrait AI, feel free to ask them, and I do my best to answer them in this video. And I'm going to answer one question right away. Um, at the same time that On One Software released On One Portrait AI, they announced and they made available for pre-sale On One Photo Raw 2021. And some people have asked, is On One Portrait AI included in On One Photo Raw 2021? And the answer is yes. So you don't have to buy On One Portrait AI right now if you don't want to. You could wait and pre-order, or you could pre-order right now on One Photo Raw 2021 or wait and buy it when it's released next month. I think it's coming out next month. I'll have all that info in the description below this video. Anyway, uh, whenever On One Photo Raw 2021 does come out, it has On One Portrait AI integrated into it. Uh, so you could, uh, you know, everything I show in this video and in uh, that video I did a few days ago, will you'll be able to do an On One Photo Raw 2021. So just wanted to answer that question right off the bat. Now in this specific video, um, I'm going to do two different images uh, to try to explore some more features of the application. Uh, first of all, uh, we're going to do this image of my oldest son, Anthony, and his fiance, Christy, because it has more than one person in it. And I want to show you how um, On One Portrait AI handles an image with more than one person. Then we're going to do this image of um, these four guys. Now there's uh, obviously more than one person in this image. Also, this image will cause an issue and I wanna show you how to fix it or how, how to work with it um, because you may run into this problem as well. So we're gonna start out with uh, this image here. And also I just wanna add real quick that uh, on one, just to make it clear because I might've been a little confusing at the beginning, on One Portrait AI is available right now. It's on sale if you want to buy it. In the description below the video, I'll have a link to it. You could use my discount code and save even more money. On One Photo Raw 2021 isn't available right now, but it's available for pre-sale, and they have packages where you could get other stuff too. And I'll have all that linked in the description below this video as well. All right. Now, you probably noticed we're in Lightroom. That's because I mentioned in that other video I did a few days ago, uh, on One Portrait AI works as a standalone application. It will read raw files. It also reads all the popular file types, you know, JPEG, TIFF, all that stuff. But it also works as a plugin in a lot of different applications. Photoshop, Lightroom, Affinity Photo, CorelDRAW, PaintShop Pro, Apple Photos. I'm going by memory here, so maybe I forgot one. And it doesn't work in Capture One yet, but it will work as a plugin in Capture One soon, from what I understand. So I want to show you how it works as a plugin in Lightroom. So I have this image in Lightroom. Uh, there's been no local adjustments done to this image at all. I just did like basic adjustments. And if we open up the brush, you can see I didn't brush their skin or anything like that or whiten their teeth with the brush. I didn't do any uh, healing or clone of any blemishes or anything like that. So we're gonna send this image over into On One Portrait AI. Just right click on it, go down to edit in and go down to on One Portrait AI 2021. And I'm going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. When you use this application as a plugin, it doesn't work on the raw file. So it has to be sent over as either a PSD, TIFF, or JPEG. Um, by default, it picks PSD. I suggest you stay with that. Uh, Adobe RGB by default's fine. Everything's default's fine. We'll just click at it. So now Lightroom will create that PSD file, and then it will send that PSD file over into On One Portrait AI. And when it does that, um, what it will do is On One Portrait AI will find both their faces. You could see finding faces. And then if you look over here on the right, you could see that it has their faces uh, up here. And it has my son Anthony Jr.'s face first and Christie's face second. And if you just click on them, you could work on each of them independently of the other. So we'll start out with my son, Anthony. 
Uh, you can see that his face is here. Here's the mask uh, for his face. And um, I wish I was as good looking as either of these guys uh, because there's not a lot needs to be done here. Why don't we just maybe soften some of those blemishes a little more, smooth his skin just a tiny bit more, uh, whiten his eyes. Now he's squinting. It was a very bright day, and he tends to squint when he smiles. So um, that was a question I received too when you adjust eyes. Uh, it was... I think the question was worded about, does it fix lazy eye? Specifically, what that person meant was, if someone's eyelids are, because they're squinting, will it open their eyelids? And it does not do that. So you, it, it just will make eyes larger. Like you can make an eye larger, like right here, it's making his left eye larger. But it doesn't uh, like open their eyelids or anything like that. So it doesn't do that. I'm going to brighten his face just a little bit. And, um, oh, I said, I was whitening his eyes a little. I add a little more detail in his eyes and I'll whiten his teeth like that. And then we'll go over to Christy. Uh, she's right here. And, um, I think her skin's fine. I think really just maybe we'll, um, add a little, we'll whiten her eyes a little bit. See how it does it. Another question I received is, um, that it looks sluggish uh, when I was using it. Is it really that sluggish? And I'd say it really isn't that sluggish, I don't think. And I'm comparing it to the portrait retouch, AI portrait part of Luminar 4. It's pretty much about the same as far as uh, speed. Um, what I found is that the Luminar portrait retouch is heavy, more heavy-handed. Uh, you could really like obliterate someone's skin pores and everything you could really and this is a lot more subtle uh, than that we'll add some detail to her eyes you can see that and i'll whiten her teeth as well all right so let's see yeah let's do before after there's before and there's after before after i think i overdid christy's irises a little bit uh so I'll go to the detail of her eyes and bring that down a touch. Um, they don't really either, one of them really don't have dark circles under their eyes. So I'd say that's done. There's before, there's after. Let's brighten up uh, Christy's face a little bit too. Because I do like doing that. So there's before and there's after. So you can see how it handles multiple people real fine. So you just click done. And when you click on it, it'll apply those uh, changes to the PSD file. And it will then open back up in Lightroom. And you'll have two images. You'll have the original RAW file, and you'll have the PSD file. And the PSD file, of course, has all those edits we just did. And there it goes, right there. All right, and if we go down to the film strip, you can see we have the two images now. So there's the image that we just did, and there's the original RAW file. So there's after. And there's before. And that's the way I like to process an image. Kind of subtle. I don't like to go too overboard. All right, now this image has four people in it. And we got um, a little more issue here. Uh, it's kind of dark. Uh, and you'll see, this is my son's old band. Uh, this is an older picture. When they all had long hair, they all have really short hair now. Um, but anyway, we'll just right click on this. And we'll go down to edit in. And we'll go down to On One Portrait AI 2021. Again, we're going to accept all those defaults and hit OK. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned this in an older picture. This is his old band, Kill the Clock. He's now in a band called Funeral Coat. And they're uh, actually getting their first um, album mixed and mastered right now. Uh, you could check. they got a few songs on, um, on iTunes and stuff, uh, Spotify and whatnot. If you look up Funeral Coat, you'll find them. And... Uh, this shot, as you look at it in the loaded, it found three faces, but there's four people in the image. And that's where I said, you may run into an issue. Um, it didn't find Dan in the background. I don't know why, maybe because he's further away, maybe because, uh, his face is smaller compared to everyone else. I really don't know why it didn't find him, but don't fret. We could fix it real fine. Go over here to the right and you can see that there's a little like humanoid looking icon with a plus sign. Click on that. And it will say to add a face. And it comes up with to um, adjust this box over the person's face. So we'll just make the box smaller and put it over his face. 
like that, and then click OK. Now, when you do that, it will come up with that person, and it has a mask. And as I look at it, that mask doesn't look right. See how that mask looks really small? Uh, so I don't think it actually found his face properly. So I'm going to click on this mask. You can see how it is just kind of a circle. I don't think that really is a representation of his entire face properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, reset it, and I'm going to invert it. Now, when I reset it, it's white. That means it's like everything that box, that whole box now thinks it's his face. We just want his face, right? So we're going to invert it so it's black. Then I'll go over here and get this br face brush, right? And I'll come in here and I'll make sure opacity's at 100. Make sure opacity's at 100 uh, when you do this because it will default to 50 and you want it at 100 when you do this. I'm going to use the right bracket key to make the brush larger. And I think I'll bring a uh, feathering down a little bit as well. So I got this really big brush. I'm going to left bracket key, make it a little smaller. And then we'll come in here and we'll just do his uh, face here. And I'll do get his neck too. All right, now we look, and it looks more like it's probably him, right? Now, so I think that looks a little better. Now, when you do this, I'll go back to the view tool over here. Um, you know how on the other ones, like if I go over to my son Joe here, um, you could see how it does that pre-processing. I mentioned that in that video I did last time. Well, when you find a face like I just did for Dan, it doesn't do that. Everything will be turned off. Uh, so you have to come in and basically turn everything on. So uh, we'll close down the mask part so we could see a little better. And let's start out with skin. I'll turn that on by clicking on the little button there. And we could turn that up. We could open up this. And we could get some blemish. Got a little bit of a blemish there. We'll get rid of that. Bring some detail back. Add a touch of smoothing. Um, he's got no shine on his face. Don't need to worry about that. Go to the face. We could add some brightness. Um, don't need to slim his face. And now look at how the eyes are grayed out. That's because we painted on his face, but we really didn't tell it where his eyes are. It didn't find them. So we need to do that. So we'll turn on eyes. And when we do that, it's saying to click the center of each eye. So click on the center of each eye, like right there and right there. All right, now it comes up with these overlays, and now you can just adjust the overlay uh, so that it's basically just on his eyes and not like on his eyelids or anything like that. And it only takes a second. Right, and then we did it. Now uh, we have the eyes, and now you can see how you can make the, the eyes larger or smaller, although I did them backwards. I have the left eye as the right eye. I should have clicked on this eye first, then that eye, but you get the idea. And um, But we're not going to do that. We could whiten his eyes. There's, his eyes are really dark, so there's no need to, or there's no way to add any detail there. We could get rid of those dark circles a little bit. See how that goes? So that's working great. Uh, we don't need to enhance his brows or anything like that. Uh, his mouth is fine, really. So it's doing the same thing, though, about doing an overlay to include the teeth. But since he's, we don't need to do anything with his mouth, and we don't... Um, we don't really have his uh, teeth showing. Uh, we're just not going to do that at all. So I'd say that the part for Dan is done. Uh, so we'll move on to my son, Joe, with this really, really long hair that he doesn't have anymore. Of course, when he got sick, he lost all his hair. And when he lost all his hair, they all cut their hair. And uh, they kept it short. So that's kind of cool. So um, let's go to this. And let's uh, his freckles kind of lessen those a little bit, smooth his skin a little more. And uh, he's got no shine on his face. Let's add some brightness to his face. Uh, don't need to slim his face or enlarge eyes. Don't need to do any of that. Um, let's see. Whitening of his eyes. Add some detail in his eyes. He's got some dark circles a little bit. We'll lessen those. His brows are fine. He's not showing his teeth. Uh, we add some vibrance to his lips a little bit. All right, now let's go over to, this is John, the guy on the right. Now I shot this with a wide angle lens. As a matter of fact, I think, um, made a note here. It was at 32 millimeters um, because my studio is kind of small. So I had to scrunch them in a little bit. And when you shoot at a wider angle lens, uh, people that are closer to the camera tend will, be, will tend to be extra large compared to when, if they were 
further back. And when they're towards the outside a little bit, it kind of distorts their face. And you can see that Mike over here on the left and John over here on the right, it looks like their faces are pretty wide and they really aren't. If you knew these guys, you would say, wow, it looks, dis it looks distorted. So we are going to slim their faces slightly uh, because we want it to look more uh, realistic. So when I get to that part, we will. Now, uh, again, I think we'll just bring that master retouch to the right. Um, okay, we'll slim his face a little bit, just a little bit, right? We don't need, his eyes are huge, don't need to worry about that. Um, let's see, we'll whiten his eyes a little bit. He has really light brown eyes, so we'll kind of add some detail there. Uh, let's get a little bit of dark circles, get rid of those. His brows are fine, uh, everything else with his lips are fine. So I'd say he is already done. We'll go over to Mike. And similarly, we'll just bring this retouching up. We'll add a little brightness to his face. Um, they'll slim his face also, just a little bit. Make it look more like he really looks in real life. And his eyes will whiten. His eyes are really dark, so detail won't do much uh, there. And I think we're done. Uh, so we're done. So we'll do before, after. There's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. I might have smoothed the skin a little bit too much on, um, on Mike and my son and maybe in Dan a little bit. So there's before and there's after. Oh, well, that's consider it done. So we'll click done. So anyway, I wanted to do this image, as I mentioned, because it only found three of the four people and you have to add that other one. When you have to add it, you will have to tell it uh, where the eyes are on that person and where the lips are on that person as well. So, you know, you get an idea on how to do that. And uh, as you can see, then it gives you that those two images. Here's the original raw file. And here's the processed image, original raw file, processed image. So overall, you can see, I think it's a pretty powerful application. Um, I think I answered uh, the most of the questions. Like I said, the main question was, is it included in On One Photo Raw 2021? And yes, it is. It's integrated in that. So it's not a standalone app. When you, do, when you get On One Photo Raw 2021, it is my understanding that it's just integrated inside of On One Photo Raw 2021. It will, I believe, they'll work as a plugin. So if you buy On One Photo Raw 2021, but you use Lightroom mainly, and you could still though send an image over to the portrait part of on one photo 2021 to do a portrait that is my understanding that is how it is going to work um, again it's available for purchase right now i'll have all that info in the description below this video and my um, discount code is working on the sale so you could save even more money with my discount code thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon <laughs>